Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to my weekly live stream. I'm just going to, we might fluff around a little bit until everyone turns up. Um, let me just make sure that we are live on YouTube. There's a little bit of a delay, so. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to my weekly live stream. This is where we talk about new beauty releases and I go live every single Sunday at 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So if you are watching this in the replay and you want to join us one week for this live stream, you can sound off in the comments and have a chit chat to everyone in the community about your thoughts on the beauty releases. So if you do want to join me live at all, make sure you set your timer, your alarm for 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. I always do try and post my uh, thumbnail on YouTube like the night before. So you've got a, a time and you've got an idea and you do have the option if you go click through on that video, you can set a reminder and then YouTube will give you a notification when I do eventually go live so yeah i think that's about it um and when also i will say when you see my thumbnail show up on your subscription feed um it does say your local time so what time i will be going live your local time so <laughs> if it's like 3 a.m or 2 a.m in the morning i do not expect you to be here <laughs> you can always watch the replay so um, if you are joining me live, make sure you jump on in the comments and let me know you're here. And you can also uh, sound off while we were going through the new beauty releases, your thoughts on everything. Um, first of all, we have Kylie here this morning. Good morning, Kylie, welcome. Um, it's good to see your beautiful face again. Um, and what else was I gonna say? I will do my, my short little disclaimer here because I know sometimes I get comments that I'm really negative and blah, blah, blah. Um, I will let you know that if you don't like listening to people be really negative about your favorite makeup brand or your favorite influencer collab, this is probably not the place for you. We are quite critical around here and um, we're all highly critical. We all have massive collections. We're all trying to save money. So that is why we are all quite negative sometimes about the new beauty releases. But if you love learning how to be critical and learn how to get a critical eye about these new beauty releases, then this is definitely the place for you. So as per usual, I'm going to share my screen with you today and I have a glorious, glorious second screen sitting in front of me here. So I think it's going to be a lot easier for me today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we finally have some more um, upgrades around here. Okay. So as per usual, I do follow a few um, Instagram pages. One is the girls, Kat and Hayley from Beauty News. So I follow Beauty News Official. I also follow Trend Mood and Indie Makeup Spotlight. And the page Indie Makeup Spotlight, I will let you know, is run by Amy Loves Makeup. That's her beauty channel here on YouTube. So scrolling down, we have a few things that have been released this week, um, not much. So starting off here with the, oh, we have more people. Michelle, it has been so long. It is so good to see you here. Um, Carly, I'm here, only here for a bit today. That is fine, lovely. That is fine. You can jump off whenever you need to. So first of all, we have a new finishing powder from Zoeva Cosmetics, and this is supposed to be the Authentic Skin Finishing Powder, uh, Silky Smooth, Loose Powder, effort, effort, Effortlessly <laughs> Melts Into Your Skin and Sets Makeup um, All Day Long, Extra Fine, Ultra Blendable, Weightless Formula, Glides Evenly um, As It Absorbs, Oil Minimizes Shine and Leaves a Translucent and Soft Matte Finish. Okay. So we have a little mesh system here. I'm not the biggest fan. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of this like mesh kind of system. I sometimes feel like it doesn't get out enough powder. Um, finishing powder. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so it is infused with energizing gemstones like tourmaline, quartz, and amethyst powders to help revitalize the skin to look radiant. I was wondering why it was here with a picture of amethyst in the um, in the picture here. Um, I don't know about this infused with gemstones business. Um, I know a lot of people do believe that, but 
um, I'm a little bit of a skeptic when it comes to enthused um, kind of uh, infused kind of stuff. I will say I have oh, other side. I have um, crystals up the back here. I do I do like how they look, and I think that it's really cool how like the earth creates the different kind of crystals. But when it comes to like the energy of the crystals, I don't really like understand that I don't really have that like association with crystals I just kind of I like how they look I think they look pretty and I think it's cool how the earth creates them I just don't have that like I don't, yeah the energy thing I don't really get that um so we also have rosehip oil in this not sure how I feel about that um we have two four six shades um holy moly <laughs> Uh, Carly says, okay, now they've lost me. Good morning, Carolyn. Welcome. Um, I don't want my pores blocked with genders. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, could you imagine going to the dermatologist and the dermatologist is like, why do you have amethyst in your pores? <laughs> um, I was thinking, I was just thinking that shade range wasn't the worst, but then gemstone infused as much as I like crystals, but not in my makeup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know how I feel about gemstone, especially gemstone dust in my makeup. I, that's a little bit strange. I don't know about that. I don't know. I guess you, if you're that way inclined, you might really like this product. Um, but yeah, I do agree with Kylie. Uh, the shade range is not the worst and it's good to see that they don't have a translucent, which covers all skin tones, uh, shade for once. They actually have like a really deep, um, skin toned um, targeted powder as well as like they've got a pinky colored one and they've got a couple in between um, what was I going to say because quite often translucent powder still does not suit the deepest of deep skin tones it doesn't turn up translucent on their skin it can pull quite ashy on their skin um, and they do get a bit of flashback if you're using a translucent powder on really dark skin tones so it's good to see that they haven't just come out with one translucent shade um, I like that they have these different shades for different skin tones um, yeah other than other than the gem infused um, this is kind of upsetting me how they have this <laughs> the other way around because uh, this one is lighter than this one the rest are in like lightest to deepest except these two I don't know why they've done that um, yeah other than the gem infused business and this kind of meshy uh, system, because I don't often like these mesh kind of systems for powder. I just find that they're not the best for dispensing powder. The price is pretty good, um, but Zoeva, I think, in general, have pretty good prices. 26 US dollars, so you're looking at probably about 50 Australian dollars for a loose powder. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, just this gem infused. I can't get behind that. <laughs> Okay. Next, we have some new products from Revolution Skincare. So we have some makeup removers and cleansers. Now, I will say I'm not generally one to like Revolution. Um, like, I don't personally use a lot of their products, but I do think that they have a good kind of research, development, marketing team. Um, we have a crap load of cleansers here. So we have the lip color remover. We've got the makeup removal spray. Interesting. The gentle eye makeup remover. We've got the cleansing jelly, hydrating, hydration boost cleanser, cleansing milk jelly, melting, <laughs> melting gel cleanser, and the purifying cleanser paste. <coughs> That's an interesting one, cleanser paste. Um, so we have a huge range of different textures. We've got a huge range of different types of products. I think this is a really good range. I think it's a good range because you can kind of pick what kind of texture of cleanser that you like. Um, we've got different things for eye makeup remover. We've got different things for lip color remover, um, which sometimes if you have those really, really staining lip products, this might be a really good one to get rid of those standing like uh, long wear products, liquid lipsticks, lip stains, different things like that. This might be a good one for them. And their prices are really reasonable as per usual for Revolution. This makeup removal spray, I don't know how effective this will be. I don't know. I think that's a little bit of a gimmick. 
Um, what do we have here? The gentle eye makeup remover, um, the cleansing jelly. The packaging's nice with the, the baby blue, baby pink. Yeah, I think it's a decent range. I personally probably wouldn't pick any of this up. I just don't think that they are, what's the right word? I don't think there's like enough science behind this kind of stuff for my liking, particularly as I'm starting to get older, my skin's starting to show signs of aging. Um, I think for me, I would prefer to use things that are really pre preventative as I'm getting a like older skin um i think now for me is a really good time to start using preventative products and not so much these like really cheap kind of products i think if you're just starting to get into makeup and looking after your skin these could be really good products they're in a really good price range and for a cleanser i think that it's okay to kind of go a little bit cheaper when it comes to cleansing as long as it gets your makeup off Spending only like $7 on a cleanser is not a bad idea. That way you can put the bulk of your money into your serums and like the later half of your skincare. Um, didn't Urban Decay come out with a similar line a couple of years ago? Cleansing stick, balms and lip color remover. I don't think they did so well. Yeah, they did. They did. I think the problem with that stuff that Urban Decay came out with was that it was in a stick. And I don't know if you guys are like me, but anytime something's in kind of a stick, I get a little bit weary of it. Um, any any kind of cleansing serum, like stick kind of product that you put on your face and then you like just cap it and then you put it on your face the next day, especially if it's a cleansing product and you're going to be putting it, like you're rubbing it all, all over your makeup and then you're putting the cap on that and then you're using it the next day. To me, that is one of the grossest things ever. Just the fact that you're going to get all your makeup build up on it. Oh, I just think that's so gross. <laughs> and I think that might have been why um, the Urban Decay ones didn't do as well. Um... Rubbing a dirty stick on my face with yesterday's makeup on it. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's exactly why the Urban Decay stuff and any kind of stick products don't really do very well. The only sticks I like are lipsticks and nude sticks. Yeah, I don't mind um, like cream contours and different things like that. But me personally, I would be like taking it off like either with a, a spatula or I would be like putting my brush onto the stick and then applying it to my face. I wouldn't be like drawing it on my face. Okay. The house lab stuff we spoke about a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to skip over that. We'll touch briefly on this, but you guys are probably already going to guess what I'm going to say. Pure cosmetics are jumping on the cannabis bandwagon. Um, we have a crap load of CBD stuff. Um, we have some primers. We've got some setting sprays. We've got some, uh, balms, some lip and cheek balms. We've got some highlighters and we also have some soothing eye creams. So it looks like these actually have, um, I still haven't done the research that I said that I would do, <laughs> but this says that it has 10 milligrams of CBD in it. Uh, these two and these ones up here say that it has 25 milligrams of CBD in it. Um, yeah. <laughs> They're just jumping on the bandwagon. Um, it might very well be decent products, but I just feel like there's this bandwagon of cannabis, marijuana-related stuff, and everyone is just jumping on that bandwagon at the moment. So it's all this kind of skincare-infused stuff. It's like the craze at the moment. Um, it's all the trend at the moment. It's Yeah, it's getting a little bit old. It's like as soon as one person comes out with something and it gets a little bit of popularity, everyone's like, oh, let's try that. Let's let's throw some money into that. Um, I think now people will be even more wary of stick and germs. Yes, that's a very good point, Michelle. I think given everything, and there's a there's a big like, not um, what's the word? Uh, people at the moment, and I have seen it a lot across YouTube, people are really, like, wary and they're a little bit concerned about 
are using their makeup at this time and um, like if they're going to spread germs or anything like that. Um, and I think that you're right when it comes to sticks and germs, people are going to be even more cautious going forward. Um, CBD, your <laughs> next trend, please, says Michelle, I think I'd rather have the gem dust. Yeah, I am inclined to agree with you. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree with you. Okay. Coffee break. Uh, Ofra are coming out with a new glitch collection. Last, was it last year or was it late last year? They've come out with a glitch palette before previously. And um, this is their Glitch 2000 collection. We have a palette for 29 US dollars and we also have some flexi sticks, which I believe is their liquid lipstick formula. Um, I'm not overly keen on this palette as much as I wasn't overly keen on the last palette. They're all shimmers. And if I am using a palette, I kind of like to have the option of either like just grab one product, or one eyeshadow from that palette or be able to use the palette as a whole cohesive palette. So the fact that this doesn't have any mattes in it, I typically like to use mattes and shimmers in my eyeshadow looks. The fact that this doesn't have any mattes in it at all is one of the main reasons why I don't like it. Plus we have these like quite dark tones in here that I am not, I don't really wear them on a daily basis. So for that reason, I probably would skip this whole palette. These um, flex sticks, the colors actually look really quite nice. These like magenta, what have we got? A neutral magenta, a rose copper with silver flex. Probably would skip that one. This nude mauve one, oh, that would probably, that, that sounds like my kind of um, liquid lipstick. Ofra, you can get Ofra from, I believe, Glam Raider in Australia. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't tried that much from Ofra. I think about the only thing that I have from Ofra is their highlighters. So when it comes to commenting on their liquid lipstick formula or their eyeshadow formula, I don't really have much knowledge of it, but I haven't heard the best things about their eyeshadows. Their liquid lipsticks, I know there's a lot of influences that their liquid lipstick formula is like their absolute favorite. I think um, Samantha March is one of them. I she collaborated with them just recently. So, um, yeah. Okay. We have some new products coming out from Nomad Cosmetics. Now, we have the three-piece Studio 54 collection. Um, so, this has, <coughs> this has a uh, eyeshadow cord in it. Um, this is the multi-chrome disco shadow palette. Then we have the multi-chrome disco lighters. So we have two highlighters by the looks of it. Uh, the highlighters are colored highlighters. So it would just depend on if these are colors that you would wear. And then the eyeshadow, once again, is a all um, shimmer eyeshadow palette. Um, they're actually quite pretty, these colors. This one at the end is probably the only one that I don't like. This like sil um, silver, that's definitely gold. <laughs> it's goldy colored um, shimmer at the end, but the rest look really pretty. And they have, you can even see the shift. I'm just gonna play the video so we can see um, the shift in them. Oof, these two at the end and this pinky purpley one, really pretty. That's really pretty. Okay, so you can definitely see the shift in these. I'm missing everyone's comments. Um, I have an Ofra liquid lipstick. It's pretty good. I really want this Nomad collection. Haven't tried anything from Ofra. Um, oh, goodbye, Kylie. Thank you for joining us while you could um, and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I'll see you next week. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't hate this one. Um, I probably would prefer to try one of the Nomad eyeshadow palettes though, rather than this collection or maybe, I don't know, do they sell singles? I wonder if they sell singles. Cause I would rather just buy like these three or even just these two <clears throat> than the whole collection. You can buy the whole bundle for 52 US dollars. Um, 
It's a little bit expensive. The packaging is nice. I'll give them that. I do like this glittery packaging. But I probably, like I said, I probably would prefer to try one of their other um, bigger eyeshadow palettes just so I can see what the formula is like. Um, and that way I can go that way instead of just multi-chromes. I'd like to get like a good feel, like a good all-around feel of their eyeshadow formula instead of just one particular formula. Um, Eden has joined us. Good morning, Eden. New subscriber from New Zealand. Oh, how exciting. Um, okay, we have some new palettes from Morphe. Now, any of you that have been here for a while know my feels about Morphe. I cannot stand the massive eyeshadow palettes. Um, I don't think I've ever tried anything from Morphe because the massive eyeshadow palettes always turn me off. I have very limited storage as it is without trying to find somewhere to put those massive 35 pan eyeshadow palettes. But these guys at the moment are piquing my interest. So we have two new nine pan eyeshadow palettes I'm so glad to see that Morphe is finally figuring out that they can come out with a cohesive eyeshadow palette, a cohesive color story in just nine eyeshadows. Morphe must have hired someone new on, on their research and development team because I have been really enjoying what they're coming out with lately. This one up the top is speaking my language. These mauve tones, it is pulling on my strings. I love mauve-toned mauve eyeshadows. Uh, so this one at the top is, it's calling my name. This one at the bottom, I can 100% leave because these kind of smoky tones, I don't wear that often. So having a, um, having a whole smoky-toned eyeshadow palette, I definitely don't need it. But this one at the top, <laughs> It's pretty. Um, these are 18 Australian dollars each. So obviously a little bit more expensive than ColourPop, but when you think about the conversion from, um, I think actually in US dollars, ColourPop is 12, Australian, 12 US dollars for their nine hand. So I guess on par with Australian, on par with ColourPop. I'm tripping over, tripping over my words today. Uh, on par with ColourPop because, I, like I said, I do believe that their 9 pan eyeshadow palettes are 12 US dollars. 18 Australian dollars for a 9 pan eyeshadow palette is pretty good, I think. If these come to Mecca when Mecca reopens their stores, I would definitely like to swatch these before I commit to buying. If these were in store, I swatched it, I liked it, I probably would pick it up. This one up the top, really pretty. I can support, I can get behind and I can support Morphe if they are coming out with like reasonable things. And to me, a nine pan eyeshadow palette is reasonable. Yeah. Um, the shipping is what puts me off. Oh, okay, Nomad shipping. Is Nomad, is Nomad an American, um, is it an American indie brand or is it from somewhere else in the world? I can't remember. Um, Carolyn says, I like that top one. I thought you would. I thought you would. You and I with mauve eyeshadows, like every time there's mauve eyeshadows, <laughs> but like give it, uh, I miss going to Mecca. Yes, I know. I, when this, this week, um, the, beauty loop emails and it was like you have to place an order and I was like oh but I just want to go into my mecca and pick it up it was so heartbreaking that I couldn't just just go down to my local store and just pick it up I do miss going to mecca I'm I'm really bad like I'll just go in there as well to um I'll just go in there just for the sake of it like and I'll just like kind of do a lap of the shop and um 25 to Australia, 25, <laughs> that's one problem that I have with shopping from a lot of indie brands is their shipping prices. And I know, like, I know I'm like in two minds when it comes to ordering from indie brands. Like I know that 
I am being really entitled saying that they should pay for my shipping. But um, like it's still, when you think about it, it's still like jacks up the price of something for everyone internationally like it really jacks up the price of the product and to me it's something that when i pay for shipping it like automatically like it adds to the price of the product i i include it as a price or part of the product price who ordered to get their beauty glue <laughs> i did i did i spent way too much money at mecca i am kind of ashamed of what i brought from mecca you guys will see it soon <laughs> Um, yeah, I go into browse. Yeah, I just go in just to browse and I don't know about you guys, but the girls at my local store, um, they're really lovely. So I, I really enjoy like the interaction with them. So um, I might order something. I just bought a gift card to get my beauty loop box. I've already placed two orders recently, so I couldn't decide when to buy to get this. Yeah, I was like, do I place it? Do I not place it? Do I place it? I know I was talking to my friend and she was like, I still haven't placed my mecca order. I don't know what to buy. <laughs> I didn't know you could order a gift card, though, to get it. That's such a smart idea. I will definitely have to remember that for next time. I ordered yesterday. I didn't want to, um, but I wanted my beauty loop. Good idea, Eden. I picked up the app. Oh, my God, Carolyn, I'm so glad you said that because so did I. I was. I placed my order and I was like, I cannot believe I just spent $70 on a setting spray. So this setting spray better change my life. It better change my life. I'm definitely going to have to keep that in mind even for next time. Just going to get a gift card and do it that way. Okay. Next, we have a, another product from Makeup Revolution, and this is a, another collaboration with Roxy or Rox, Roxaurus. Um, I don't know who this is, um, but she has previously had a eyeshadow palette with them, and now she's coming out with a blush palette. So we have eight blushes in this palette. And she's also got a three-piece liquid lipstick um, set. This eyeshadow palette reminds me of those, um, sorry, this blush palette reminds me of the eyeshadow palettes from Mecca. You know those, um, what are they called? The formula is super chalky. Um, you know the Mecca brand eyeshadow palettes? You guys probably know the ones I'm talking about. But the formula is super chalky. I'm wondering whether these would be the same. So they're all quite pink blushes. I don't think anyone needs this many pink blushes. Uh, there's probably a little bit too many pinks for my liking. I would have liked to see some different color variations, particularly the like these two look the same, these two look the same. Um, this one and this one looks the same and this one and this one looks the same. So she probably could have had a blush quad instead of a, um, actually they're probably deliberately the same. I can't really tell in these swatches whether they are like one's matte and one's shimmer. Not a very good, not very good lighting on that swatch picture. Um, okay, that looks to be what it might be, that some of them are matte, some are shimmer. Here we have the liquid lipsticks, nice colours. That colour that she's wearing is very pretty. <laughs> so this is the whole thing that she's got. We've got the, her eyeshadow palettes here. She, oh, she came out with her bronzer palette and then we've got blushes. I'm just going to go back to the first photo. And see if we can actually see if they are. Where is it? Yeah. See, that's not a very good photo either. I'm trying to see if some of them are mattes and the other, like the other half, a shimmer, and that's kind of why they've doubled up with a lot of the colors. But I can't really tell. These two here look like they've got that marbled effect, and the rest look like they don't. I imagine just from previous experience, like Makeup Revolution's eyeshadows and stuff, um, I imagine that this will probably be quite chalky. So I'm going to skip this one. I'm definitely going to skip it. Um, I didn't need to set, yeah, I definitely didn't need a setting spray and I broke one of my rules. <laughs> 
you know the rule that I made, all those rules I made at the start of the year, the main rule, well, one of them being that I would use up all my setting sprays before buying a new one. Totally kick that one out the window. Um, Eden says, my recent purchases were the Ghost 4 Pen Blush Palette. Oh, my gosh, I love that palette. They still had it in stock, so I brought it finally, and also the Too Faced um, Born This Way eyeshadow palette. Um, nice, even I love that blush palette. I did. I don't need those. I really love the blushes I have. Yeah, I'm the same. I love the blushes that I have, and for me to bring like a new blush into my collection, it has to be something like, like a unique color or like a formula that I really like. That blush. That blush palette, um, Eden, that you brought, you're going to love that. I love the formula on that. The packaging, I know everyone goes off about the packaging, but when you get it, you probably won't mind it. Like, I don't mind it. It doesn't look the best, but it's functional. <laughs> um, Anjane is here. Hello, beautiful. Yes, you made another live. How exciting. Girl, what time is it there for you? It must be like the middle of the night. Um, we have some new colours in the Lime Crime Freckle Pen. Uh, does it say what the colours are? Um, I don't even think it says what the colours are. So they've added two new colours. I think that this is great to um, expand their colour range. Obviously, everyone doesn't have the same shades of freckles. Depending on the skin tone or your skin tone colour, the colours of your freckles are going to look different. Like, my freckles are going to look very different to um, freckles on someone with a lot deeper skin tone. So I think this is really smart that they're expanding their colour range on these. I haven't heard the greatest. I'm trying to think of, I think it may have been um, Melissa Gold. I think she did a video comparing this to the freck, um, freckle thing. Or maybe she just tried this, and I don't think from memory she liked it. I think she wasn't overly fussed on this one. I'm sure she compared it to something. I can't even remember. I'm sure she's the one that I saw try that, and she wasn't overly fussed on it. Um, 7.37 p.m. Okay, not as bad as I thought it was. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like 10 o'clock at night or something. Um, I wipe my blush palette off all the time. I hate fingerprints. Yeah, that's true. I do that as well because I have mine in my makeup kit. So I am like always wiping it down because I think it looks really like, not that fingerprints look bad, but I just think it looks unsanitary when you've got like fingerprints all over your products. As a makeup artist, like it doesn't, it's not a good look. Um, these, I will say the brushes, like the actual brush heads, I definitely don't need them, but these look so cute. There's something about these that I just adore. So these are a new brush set coming out from Beauty Bakery. These are the Eyes Cream Paint Job Bakeware set. That's a big um, name. But these are so cute. They come in a little brush roll that's an apron folded up, and each of the brushes are like a different cooking um implement we've got like a little whisk with a spatula a spoon so cute this is so adorable i definitely won't be buying these but i think it's adorable i've never tried the beauty bakery um brushes and this might even be their first brush set i'm not quite sure but they're so adorable so adorable if you had like a little girl that was into makeup but also loved baking with her mum. Oh, this would be so adorable to get them. So adorable. I'm not a big fan of like these kind of novelty brush handles. I just prefer like a normal um, makeup brush handle. But if you love like novelty brush and brush handles, um, this is so cute. This is done so well as well. And the fact that it's Beauty Bakery as well, this just ties in with everything with the brand like er everything beauty bakery wise is like bakery themed and this just adds to that i think that this from a marketing perspective done really well super cute ticking ticking all the boxes not gonna buy it but it's super cute 
Um, the Nautilus stuff we spoke about last week, and I will let you know I haven't purchased any of it. I have been exercising a little bit of restraint. Not much, but a little bit. Okay, this is a product we spoke about a little while ago, and we didn't really have much information, but now we finally have some more. Oh, my gosh. We have some Charlotte Tilbury Magic Lip Oil Crystal Elixir. So this is a power of a ser the power of a serum, the comfort of an oil. So it's supposed to boost lip volume by up to 70% in 28 days. How do they measure that? <laughs> How do they measure that? <laughs> like, do they? <laughs> How do they measure that? I'm just imagining them getting one of those, um, you know, those little, um, you know, those um, when you do the, the body fat tests at the, the gym and they have those, like, clamp things. It's not the nicest thing. <laughs> but I just don't imagine them, like, doing that on someone's lips and then in 28 days <laughs> measuring it again. Um, so this once again is crystal infused um <laughs> okay it doesn't even say doesn't say what i'm just trying to see if it says what crystal it's infused with it doesn't even say what crystal it's infused with which um I'm just, uh, uh, I don't know. No, it doesn't say, it doesn't say. Hopefully it says on the um, on their website what's it, what it is infused with. Because I know people that actually care about crystal infused products like to know what crystal it's infused with, like not just crystal infused. Because I know people that really follow this stuff like I'm really quite passionate about what crystals they use for what. So I know people that would be seeing that and go, yes, I want that because of the crystal infusion. They would want to know what crystal it's infused with. So um, so it's supposed to condition your lips by day, lip mask at night. Um, we've got some hyaluronic acid in there. What else do we have? We've got organic aloe vera. We have vitamin A and C's. We have plant adaptogen extracts. We have alpine rose extract, Ayurvedic squirtian leaf. Never heard of that one. Same with this product. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that ingredient. <laughs> no way. Uh, we've got sunflower seed oil. We have camellia oil, shea oil, evening primrose oil, rosehip oil. So it has a lot of... Um, It has a lot of good oils in it. This Charlotte's Magic 8 ingredients, I think that might be something that she puts in like all of her magic products, so like her magic cream and all her other magic products. I mean, it doesn't sound like a bad product, but I bet the price is bad. Where's that price tag? Fifty-six Australian dollars. <laughs> For a lip oil? No way. Holy moly. That's a lot of money for a lip oil. This thing looks tiny as well. Um, Anthony says those brushes won't be available until summer this year. Um, Carolyn says, oh, my God, like, sounds like BS. <laughs> More gem dust. Uh, those are a lot of beneficial oils. Uh, yeah, lots of really good oils, but I think that you could <laughs> I think that you could easily make something for yourself. Um, I think you could definitely make something, sorry. Something like this for yourself at home and not spend 56 Australian dollars. That's a lot of money for a lip oil. When there's really good lip products out there for like half a quarter of that price. That's insane. I sometimes think that Charlotte Tilbury 
needs a little bit of a reality check with some of her products because she charges a lot of money for some of her products. I do think that it's really like, it's really Charlotte Tilbury. Like she has kind of this prestige price range and she kind of just prices everything in that price range to try and keep her brand in that like prestige bracket and keep that like image for her brand. Um, RJ says, no way. Karen says, hanging out for a JobKeeper payment before I can place any more orders. I really do like Charlotte Tilbury products and she's been releasing new things and specials on her site. Yeah, I have been checking, I have been checking her site, but oh, every time I go on there, I'm like, I want to try that and that and that and that and that. It just ends up being way too much money. So I definitely will try Charlotte Tilbury stuff one day but probably not anytime soon because her stuff is so expensive, so expensive. Yes, $56 for a lip oil. I just think that's a little bit too much. Like for a lip product, I would expect to pay $56 for like a powder or something that covers more area space on my face. More real estate. Um, I wish Mecca would sell Charlotte Tilbury. I 100% agree with you. I, um, yeah, I wish that Mecca sold Charlotte Tilbury. I kind of think that maybe either Sephora or Mecca might possibly be in negotiations with her. Um, maybe. I hope. <laughs> I hope. Because they're always trying to like outdo each other and get new brands. So um, I hope that she comes to one of them. And that way I could actually put it towards my Mecca Beauty Loop <laughs> status, keeping that. Um, it's a bad time. I wish she would slow up on the new releases. Sephora, sell her in the US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny though because each each country has like their own like exclusivity rights and you have to like negotiate with each kind of each branch of the brand in that country. So just because like Sephora have the exclusivity in the US doesn't automatically mean they have the exclusivity in Australia. But it probably would make it easier for them to negotiate with US Australia if they already have it in Sephora Australia if they already have it in Sephora US. Okay, Glossier are coming out with a new hand cream. I will say right off the bat that I won't be buying this because I can't buy it because Glossier, one, isn't stocked anywhere in Australia, and two, they don't even ship to Australia. Um, I don't even think they ship internationally. This brand has been open for a good, I want to say maybe five to ten years now, and they still don't ship um, to Australia or anywhere internationally, I think. Let me, which I think is really doing themselves a disservice. <coughs> I know we tell, we talk about this every time we mention a Glossier product, <coughs> but I just think they could really expand their market if they just ship internationally. And you can't tell me that it's that hard to start shipping um, internationally let's see let's see um no ship to oh maybe no looks like they ship to some countries not australia looks like they ship to canada united kingdom ireland sweden denmark and france so not even <laughs> Not even like a substantial portion of the EU, just a few countries. Um, I just think that's terrible. It's terrible. Anyway, let's talk about this hand cream. We know we can't buy it, um, but let's talk about it. So this is supposed to be a fast-absorbing, nutrient-rich moisturizer in a palm-sized pod with sleek curves and super squeezable body. So fast-absorbing, nutrient-rich, we just said that. Uh, so we have meadow foam seed oil and coconut fruit extract. Nourish without a greasy feeling. 
I like that. Uses a second skin matrix to hold moisture in and keep skin stresses out. Sounds cool. <clears throat> Ergonomic pack design for on-the-go application with a click-to-close cap to secure against spillage in the bottom of your bag or anywhere else. Sounds cool. Um, a Glossier U scent reimagined for the hands. Okay. It wears closer with an emphasis on the fresh, clean notes. Okay. So it is scented. And if you don't like this Glossier U scent, you probably won't like this hand cream. I really like the sound of this packaging. <laughs> the sound of this packaging sounds really good. Um, the fact that it's squeezable makes me feel like you might get a lot of a product out. The only problem is you can't stand it up. Like if you do want to make sure everything that's down here flows down to the spout, you can't stand it up on its on its head. Um, yeah, I like the really pink packaging. Make they, the fact that they've made sure that it closes um, securely is really good. 18 US dollars for a hand cream. I don't know. I think that this would definitely, this is definitely a product that those like Glossier stands will be like, oh, a hand cream, just what I want. And they'll buy it. I think Glossier have a lot of stands that just buy everything they come out with. <clears throat> Um, second skin matrix, what does that even mean? I have no idea. I, I think it means like that it kind of coats your skin. Um, like it kind of leaves a barrier. That's kind of the way I'm interpreting it to stop um, moisture from getting out. I guess maybe kind of like a hyaluronic acid that draws moisture or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just talking crap now. I have no idea what it means. I wonder if there's anything on their website about it. Um, actually, has it even released yet? Available now. Yeah, let's see if there's anything on their website. Skin care. Here we go. Oh, it's tiny. Okay, well, I'm going to have to... Please hold. I'm going to bring this up on this screen so you guys can see. It is tiny. <clears throat> We're really going off topic today. <laughs> Look at this. This is it here. Wait for the photo to pop up. Look, it's so tiny. It looks way bigger in the photo on Instagram. Does it say in that second skin matrix to hold? No, it just says the same thing again. Well, it's already got reviews. Smells amazing. three hand creams per order that's a lot of hand cream oh no what do i do obviously i don't know how to control google okay it doesn't say anything about it it just says second skin i bet they don't even know what they're meaning it's ergonomic packaging they're really it's so small. It is so small. What a ripoff. I don't think $18, $18 is a good price now. Ingredients. Here we go. Glycofilm polystock. Key ingredient that helps form a physical film or matrix against skin stresses. I've never heard of that before. Glycofilm poly, poly stock. So yeah, it forms a physical film on your skin. There you go. Never heard of it before. 
Um, 50 mil. This is only 50 mil and it's 18 US dollars. Okay. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> it's expensive. Uh, it's got a 360 degree squeeze. They <laughs> are really, really um, harping on about the packaging. I feel like they're advertising more the packaging than the actual product. Anyway, let's go back to... Okay. I think we've bagged out that hand cream enough. A film on the skin doesn't sound like the most attractive, <laughs> I have to say. Yeah, and I guess... Yeah, I don't know, at, the, at this time as well, does it mean that you can't completely clean your hands? Like, I don't get it. Um, Eden is asking, does anyone know what the Mecca birthday gift this year is? My birthday is in February, and I got the highlighter. It came with the Mecca Cosmetica highlighter and a highlighter brush. Um, but I don't know whether it changes because I feel like my one of my friends, her birthday is in August, and she got that last year for her birthday. So I don't know. Maybe it's my store and they just have really old stock. But I don't know whether it changes, like, in the middle of the year, they do the new birthday gift, or whether it changes at the start of the year. But, yeah, I got a highlighter and a highlighter brush. I would show it to you, but... I have no idea where it is. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what, that's what, um, that's what everyone else, um, yeah, so it must change, it must change at, at the middle of the year, it must change like the 1st of July or something. Because, yeah, my friend's birthday is in August as well. And um, she got the highlighter and the brush last year as her birthday gift. And I, my birthday's in February, and that's what I got this year. So I don't know. They must change it in the middle of the year, which is annoying because <laughs> my birthday's at the start of the year. <laughs> okay. We have some new lipsticks from YSL. This is the I Love You So Pop collection. I'm going to say I love the packaging on this lipstick. I just think it's super fun. I love the, like, the hearts and the blue and the gold. I just think the color scheme goes really well together. YSL is way too expensive, way out of my price range. We have four shades in each of the collections. <coughs> so we've got some Rouge Pour Couture lipsticks and we've got some Rouge for Luck Day Shine lipsticks. So two different formulas. And it looks like we have, yeah, so they're the four colors in both of the formulas. So you can just buy whichever formula you prefer. They are all reds, though, and they're all, like, reds of different undertones. I hate these swatches. I don't think these swatches show really anything about the colors. It makes it so hard to, like, tell the color difference when the swatches are like this. I would much prefer... Just a swipe of the lipstick on an arm than these, like, fancy swatches. I don't know. What do you guys think about these? I, To me, I'm just finding it hard to see the colour differences better or as well. I just think having just four swipes of the colours, you would definitely be able to see the colours better. <clears throat> I'm not going to buy any of these because they are way out of my price range. These are like 60 or $70 in Australia, I think. Yeah. No. And I don't wear red lipsticks enough to justify paying that much for a lipstick. Um, they all look the same. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like the those swatches make all of the colors pretty much look the same if you have a really big swatch particularly when you have colors that are very very similar because these are all reds they just have different undertones so having a bigger swatch like a like nice chunky thick swatch you'll be able to see the undertone differences as opposed to the stupid number swatches that they have um, out of my price range too. Yeah, why sell in Australia is just way too expensive. Okay, 
Wayne Goss is coming out with his first makeup release. Do you guys have any guesses of what this might be? I think that it might potentially be a lipstick. Maybe. Like a square lipstick. <laughs> this person says maybe it's a Wayne Gloss. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it might be a lipstick. And I think as a first... Um, as a first makeup launch, I think a lipstick would be something that would be potentially a lot easier to make than like a complexion product or something like that. Um, I don't own any YSL either, way too expensive, yeah. I would imagine YSL would be even more expensive in New Zealand than it is um, in Australia. Um, I've been waiting to see what Wayne Glock now I keep going to say Wayne Gloss. I've been waiting to see what Wayne Gloss comes out with. Yeah, because he has, he's had his brushes out for a very long time. So I'm surprised that it's kind of taken him this long to bring out a product, um, like an actual makeup product. I don't know whether it's really the best time for him though. Um, looks like a lipstick. Everything is so much more expensive here. Yeah. I've heard that, that about um, New Zealand. Like, we have it hard enough in Australia without New Zealand. And I know you guys are, everything's so much more expensive again. <clears throat> okay, we have a new product from Sunday Riley. This is a Clean Rids Clarifying Scalp Serum. So this has AHAs and BHAs. Um, this is a rinse off serum to clarify the scalp of product buildup, excess oil, Dead skin and pollution for a cleanser, for a cleaner, healthier looking scalp and refreshed hair. Okay. I don't hate this idea. Um, what else do we also have? We have salicylic acid in it. It's supposed to dissolve sebum buildup inside of the hair follicle to support optimum hair health. Rose clay pulls impurities out. This sounds like it might. Like, if you already have dry, damaged hair, that it might really, really strip your hair because it's, like, getting everything out. It's also got clay in it. Um, it's got witch hazel. A lot of products that can really dry out. Um, we've got vitamin and mineral complex of panthenol, calcium, zinc, vitamin B, vitamin C, and vitamin E to support healthy hair growth. This clarifying scalp serum is a gentle micellar water base to lift away dirt as it rinses out of your hair. Free fatty acids, jasmine essential oil, and rose water rehydrate the scalp without making the hair oily for a full spectrum clarifying, cleansing, and hydrating rinse off scalp treatment. So it's basically saying that it does everything. Um, I don't know. It's 48 US dollars. So in Australian dollars, this is going to be like nearly a hundred dollars. And it's only a hundred and twenty mil bottle. Um not color friendly. I'm assuming that it's not color friendly either because it sounds like it might be quite stripping. <clears throat> Maybe that's something that I could test. I don't know whether I'm willing to spend that kind of money. It already cost me enough to go to the hairdresser without using this and stripping every, like, all the colour out of it. Actually, that's a really good point, though. If you do want to strip all your hair, all your colour out of your hair, this might be a good product that does that. Because uh, I know that some people um, do want to, like, strip all the colour out of their hair to make it easier for the next colour to apply. I don't know. I don't know. Like when you first read it, it sounds like a really good product, but once you actually read deeper into it and what's in it and when you think about your hair type, my hair's quite frizzy as it is, so I think that all these acids in it might dry it out even more um, and make it stand on its end even more. <laughs> um, that's a crazy price for a shampoo. Yeah, I, and that's the other thing. Like do you use this in place like to replace your shampoo or do you shampoo and then use this? Like, is it an additional step? Do you only use it like once a week? 
Like what's the recommended usage on this as well? Because I would imagine if you're using this a lot, um, if you're using this a lot, I imagine that it would probably ruin your hair. I think it would ruin my hair if I used it a lot. Um, I still need a hairdresser. I'm, I can't even remember when my next hairdresser appointment is, but I would imagine if things keep going the way it is, because I think I'm starting to get close to it, that it'll probably be cancelled. And my hairdresser is talking about moving towns, so I'm going to have to find a new hairdresser. Very rude of her. You know when you find that one person that you connect with and it's usually like your hairdresser or your, your person that does your beauty stuff and they decide to move? It's like you're breaking up with someone. Okay, we have a new concealer coming out from Tarte. This is the Hydro Seal Concealer. So this is a medium coverage C Hydro Sealer Concealer. It's supposed to help with the appearance of natural looking and fresh finish um, that effort, effort, effortlessly <laughs> covers the look of imperfections, brightens appearance under the eyes and hydrates. So it has HydroFlex technology that allows the formula to move with your skin so you can feel free to be yourself without worrying about touching up. Okay. Um, it is oil-free, fragrance-free, sweat-proof, and waterproof. Helps to cover the appearance of redness, dark circles, dark spots, and blemishes while brightening and hydrating under the eye area. This actually sounds interesting with its HydroFlex technology. Um, I know a lot of people find their under eye concealer creases. So I'm wondering whether having this HydroFlex technology would kind of prevent that and have the concealer move with your skin instead of just creasing. Um, the shade range is pretty decent for <laughs> a Tarte release, I think. Um, we have does it say, cause it are 30 shades. Um, it probably could go a little bit deeper. And I think having like almost a white concealer is a, always a good idea, especially for those people that are really, really, really pale. Um, 24 US dollars, that's pretty on par, I think, with concealers nowadays. I kind of like this packaging. It looks very like uh, lip gloss-esque kind of tube. I like it. Doe fit applicator, which I like for concealers. Um, yeah, this must be a sponge that's like specifically designed for the concealer. I don't know. It doesn't mention anything about the sponge. It's just in the photo. We've got different undertones too. Yeah, there's some different undertones in there, which is good to see. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. The name's a little bit weird, but other than that, not bad. Um, I'm not sure that I'm keen to try another Tarte concealer. Our shape tape looks so dry and heavy on me, and the Maracuja one is too rich. Um, yeah, that's true. Like the, I'm about to move on to using up my shape tape, and. I've been hearing so many people lately um, kind of bagging out shape tape and wishing that they didn't kind of get caught up in the hive. Shape tape is the next one that I have to use up in my project pan. So now that I'm, now I'm like kind of dreading. Um, Eden is asking everyone what their favorite makeup item at the moment is. That's a very difficult question. Um, what is my favorite makeup item at the moment? I am really liking my Dose of Colors Marvelous Mauves palette. The one that I have in my Pan That Palette series. I've been really enjoying using that. Okay. Last week we were talking about the 
uh, Melt Cosmetics palette. I think it might have been Kylie actually that was wanting to see swatches, but she's already gone. But we'll talk about the swatches anyway. Um, I don't mind the color story of this. For me personally, though, I think it might just be a tad too grungy for my liking. So I don't think that I would really get all that much use out of it. And I haven't heard the greatest things about their eyeliners. I think their eyeliners are a little bit hit and miss depending on the color. And some of them, especially like this one and this one, they look a little bit similar and this one and this one. I don't know. I think you definitely have to like this kind of grungy color story to want to buy this. And I don't really wear these colors all that often. So I think it would just be a waste for me. And this one's already out. This is the release that came out on 420. Um, BH highlights the green one. I saw someone else and I brought it. Gorgeous. Um, Nay. Oh, Nay's here. Hello, Nay. I'm pretty sure I remember someone being told that if they came back in a week or two, the birthday gift was changing. Oh, okay. Okay. So they must change it in like. <laughs> totally lost all concept of time. What month are we in? We're in April. Um, it must change in like May, end of May. That's a weird time to. Um, a weird time too oh okay so change over last august seems about right okay yeah so it must be like july or august that's a weird time to change the birthday gift i think um i want to try melt but it would be 100 nz at least for a palette which i would rather spend on the touch donor that's fair enough and i know there's a lot of like mixed opinions about melt. So I was very, what's the word? Like I was very cautious about trying melt. I ended up getting some of their palettes for my birthday from my husband. So yeah, I haven't really, <laughs> really tried them though. Um, but there's a lot of mixed reviews about melt. Some people absolutely love them. Some people hate them. Some like, people are on the fence. Then there was this, all that drama with their eyeshadows that, that jump out of the pan. So I understand like wanting to try them, but being like a bit hesitant to commit. Um, and this was not too long before my birthday when I was looking to see what it was going to be. My birthday is early October, so change over last August seems right. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Thanks for that information, Nate. Um, what was I going to say? I... Uh, I was going to say something about melt. You can get melt from um, Beauty Bay as well. You don't have to buy it from the melt website. They have, I think they have like everything on Beauty Bay. And they do go on sale sometimes on Beauty Bay as well. I don't know. Sometimes I just prefer to buy from places like Beauty Bay because I know they've got their shit together as opposed to like the brand itself. This is a new collection from Wet n Wild. This is the Fantasy Maker Collection. Everything in this collection is under $5, which is kind of cool. We have a lot of stuff. We have uh, pigment palettes, we've got glosses, highlighters, face and body gems, uh, high shine lipsticks, glitter gels, liquid eyeshadows, multi sticks, glitter liners, lashes, nail polish body tattoos, and setting sprays. Right. That's a lot. A lot, a lot. Um, this, I think, was possibly designed for festival season, which unfortunately is pretty much outright cancelled. We have eight eyeshadow palettes. Um, some of them look quite nice. They're pressed pigments, though, by what the palette says. So some of these, especially these, like, darker colours, if you have 
pale skin, you're probably going to find a lot of staining. So if you don't like that, then I would steer clear. We have glitter gels. I have no use for glitter gels. <laughs> no use. Uh, glitter liners. I can get behind glitter liners. Sometimes, if this is a brush though, I find sometimes with the brush eyeliner gel things, the brush can get frayed as you're like, pulling it in and putting it in the tube. I don't have any need for these. <laughs> Same with body tattoos. I have no need for body tattoos. I don't think my boss is going to be really happy with me rocking up to work with some body tattoos um, on, like, flash tattoos. What else do we have? Body gems. Yeah, I don't need any of this. If I was going to a festival or if I was that way inclined, I think that this collection would be really cool, especially if everything's under $5. I think these, like, face gem sticker things would be really cool if you're going to a festival. Same with the flash tattoos. But I don't have anywhere to go. I'm not leaving my house. Maybe I could have a party in my house by myself with my dogs. <laughs> um, I love Beauty Bay, but they're charging postage at the moment. Are you serious? Is that for everything? Or is it – do you still get the, the over the – cap free postage or is it just flat out everything <coughs> sorry for the slurping noises um okay we have a new palette from makeup scientist cosmetics this is the sodium fine palette i kind of like that name it's kind of cool. We have 12 shades, shimmer, glitter, matte, and pressed glitter pigments. Okay, this has pressed glitters in it. I'm not a big fan of pressed glitters in eyeshadow palettes. I'm a little bit curious about this packaging. Yeah, these that's definitely pressed glitter. Um, I don't think that's, that swatch photo is not the best. Looks like it's a screen grab from somewhere. It looks like the palette comes apart like that they're not attached like the top and the actual eyeshadows see what i mean they look like they're not attached they must just magnetize to each other yeah i don't really like that i don't know why but it's a cool idea because then you can use the the mirror like you can actually hold the mirror up without having to hold the eyeshadows up as well. I don't know why I'm opposed to them not being attached. It just it's just not not normal. <laughs> it's just not how it's done. <laughs> I don't know. I've never really seen a palette that like just the, the top magnetizes to it. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't really um, think I would use this palette. I think it's a really cool design, and I think if you were, like, science-minded, this would be really cool because it's got lots of, like, science terms in there. It comes in, like, a little beaker. I'm probably saying that wrong. <laughs> I don't, what are these things called? This is a beaker, isn't it? Or the beaker is the bigger one. I forget what this is called. Um... Yeah, it's a cool palette, just not for me. What else do we have? These new products from P. Louise that are coming out. Um, my order was $100, but they were going to charge $6 standard postage, which is usually free. That's insane. I wonder why they've changed their shipping policy, because I would imagine they would still be getting a lot of orders. That's crazy. Um, okay, so this is a new collection from P. Louise. And I was looking at this last night and I was a little bit confused. We have the sandwich stages, which is designed to simplify the process of building up stages to your makeup with four palettes, all designed for required areas of any application. 
And then it's got an example in here. For example, you have a palette of transition shades, first blend, second blend, and lid shades. So I'm wondering in here, there must be four eyeshadow palettes. I don't know whether I'm interpreting that right, but it seems a little bit strange. Then we have the um, crisp finish, uh, five new paint shades with a brush, and that's these, it comes like in a little set, you get the, the base and the brush. And then we have the oh so beautiful new brow gel and cream brow pencil. So that's this set here. Yeah, that's true, Carolyn. I didn't really think of that. Um, Carolyn says times are tough. I bet shipping costs, especially air freights, have gone up. I didn't really think of that. Um, but I would like I would imagine that they are still getting a lot of orders. But I didn't really think about because there's they're not doing any like international flights at the moment, so they might have to I don't know pay more to get the stuff shipped. Because I think normally they just throw stuff in normal, like, um, commercial carriers and stuff like that. But they're not doing any, like, international passenger flights at the moment. Okay. We've already spoken about, yeah, the this sandwich thing. Wait, I'm interested, actually. Let's see. These are, will be available in six weeks. I wonder if there's anything on the P. Louise website on their Instagram. Let's check. That's why lately I've been trying to order as much as I can from like Australian stores. One, because then I can support like Australian businesses. Um, and two, I don't have to worry about like the extra time that it's going to take to come from an international store. So I haven't, I don't remember the last time I ordered from an international site. Like even stuff I've ordered on eBay recently, I've made sure that it's been an Australian seller. Because I don't know, like if I order from a seller in China or something, I don't know how long it's going to take to get to me nowadays. Um... I just, I just want to see more photos of this, this sandwich thing. No, we don't have any photos of the sandwiches. Sorry, we're going to have to wait to see more photos of the sandwiches. Yeah, that's as well. It's taking extra time for local at the moment. That's very true as well. Um, like Mecca, for example, it normally would be just like 24 hours to get to me. And I know Mecca's in Melbourne. I think their distribution is in Melbourne and I'm in Queensland. And normally they do express shipping and it would just be like the next day it would arrive. But now it's taking, I think it's taking them between three and four days just to pack. Um, and then the shipping as well to get across the states because everyone's trying to make sure that their their staff are safe, which is is good. Like obviously, I don't want somebody to be endangered just because I'm ordering makeup. <laughs> like I want everyone to make sure that they're being safe in their workplaces and that they're keeping their staff safe. Okay. We have a new eyeshadow palette coming out from, does that, this still says Cat Von D on it. What? New eyeshadow palette by KBD Vegan Beauty. It still has Cat written on it. It still has Cat Von D written on it. So did that. I still has Cat Von D written on it. Okay. So they obviously had a 
really massive stock of these pallets maybe um, or they already had this in the works before they brought Kat Von D out of the business. I don't know whether people will, like I know people know that Kat Von D isn't associated with the brand anymore, but I don't know whether people um, will still buy this if it's got her name on it. Um, so this is got, I mean, it's not bad. I don't know why they have these massive shades in there. I wish they split these in two and had like five shadows instead of four. Um, matte shimmer and sheen finishes. I like this ready color and the purple. They look good together as well, those two colors. And then we have like this brick brown um, in the Everlasting Liquid Lipstick. Um, old stock KVD. I noticed that it still said that on it. I'm guessing they're using old stock. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing up that I'm guessing they're just using up the packaging, which is like I would prefer them to use it up instead of just throw it out. But I think that they should definitely. I don't know. I think they should state why. I think they should. I think people are going to be like, why does it still have Kat's name written on it? And a lot of people like boycotted the brand because of her. I think that they should address why they're still using packaging with her name on it. Even if it's just to say like, we can't use enough old stock. Like we have an excess of these palettes um, and that's why it still has her name on it. I think that they should just address it. Maybe they have, they may have addressed it on the actual KVD um, vegan beauty website. This is just what Trend Mood has written. Um, I've been waiting for something I ordered Easter weekend, which hasn't arrived yet. Not Mecca. Using up the packaging, yeah. I, pr I would prefer them to use it up instead of just toss it in landfill. Okay. We have something interesting here. I think that this is very interesting. When I saw it, I was kind of like, what? Uh, this is the new packaging for the Maybelline Matte and Poreless Liquid Foundation. So they have taken it from a, I don't know whether it was a glass bottle or whether it was a plastic bottle, but they have taken it from this packaging to this packaging. I don't know how I feel about this. I find this packaging a little bit cheap. And if they're going to stick with this, I would like to see them drop the price of the product because I would imagine that these plastic sleeves are super cheap as opposed to this metal, not metal, this glass bottle with the plastic cap. I would imagine that these are like a quarter of the price, if not less, to purchase these in bulk than these actual bottles. Storage-wise as well, they're going to be able to store a lot more of these because they would just be coming like flat and they would fill them up. You would be able to store so many more of these as opposed to these bottles. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would hope that they would drop the price considering it's now in this packaging. So this is supposed to have a control dispenser on it uh, squeeze it to the last drop I will say you will be able to get every single drop out of this foundation so I appreciate that aspect of it especially sometimes glass jars like this are so hard to get every last drop out of the foundation I'm trying to use up my beauty blender bounce foundation at the moment it is impossible to get every drop out of that jar because it's so hard that like, you actually have to break the packaging to get into the little jar at the bottom. And then because it's so wide and the spout, the hole for where the pump goes in is so small, it's going to be impossible for me to get everything out of it. So at least with this packaging, you are going to be getting your money's worth out of the product. Um, what's everyone saying? I think it's strange though because they haven't released these palettes in years then they bring it out in this older packaging. That's actually a really interesting point, Eden. 
Um, what's everyone's favorite light to medium coverage foundation? Light to medium coverage? Um, you're putting me on the spot today, everyone. Mine would be the, I really like the Kogan Doe foundation. I forget which one I have though. I can't remember what it's called. The Kogan Doe foundation is really nice. has a really nice finish on it. I really, I really like the um, CoverGirl Ready Set Gorgeous, but I don't think it's available anymore. The, what else do I have? I'm trying to think of what I have in my drawer. I think most of my other foundations are more like a medium to full coverage. But the, the Kogan Doe one's really nice. I'm, I'm on the hunt for like a really nice foundation that I like, but I am really trying to use up a lot of foundations that I have first before I buy, buy something new. My friend loves the Urban Decay, that new one that they came out with recently. I can't remember what it's called. Is it the Naked? Naked Skin? Naked something. And every time she wears it, it looks beautiful on her. But I would say it's probably more a higher coverage. But you could probably sheer it out. I can't remember what it's called. Um, Eden says her favourite two foundations are the Too Faced Peach Perfect and the ABH Luminous. They're more medium coverage. I have never tried the um, either of them, actually. The um, Too Faced Peach Perfect is actually was on my list of uh, ones to try. I think my friend's going to give me the rest that she has because she doesn't like it. Uh, the Urban Decay Stay Naked Weightless Liquid Foundation is the one that my friend really likes and it always looks beautiful on her skin. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to expand this packaging to other products that they have or other foundations that they have. And I wonder if this is going to be something that is only available through certain retailers or if they're going to like distribute it like all around the world through all their stockers. Um, I'm trying to use up a lot of my foundations. Finish my It Cosmetics CC Original. I love the Peach Perfect Foundation. It's really nice. I tried a sample of the Urban Decay and I liked it. Yeah, I'm really trying to use up most of my foundations as well. I think that I'm going to struggle this year because normally I would go through like a foundation every one to one and a half months and we're like four months into the year and I have only used up one and a half foundations. Uh, the Fit Me was really nice foundation. I think this is this is a oh yeah this is the normal Fit Me. Interesting packaging. Interesting. Do you know? Does anyone know if the Fit Me is in a glass jar or if it's in a plastic? Like if this was glass or if it was plastic? Because that's my other thing. If it was glass depending on what type of glass, but glass is easier to recycle than these plastic pouches. So that's the other thing. Like they've gone from something that is easier to recycle to something that can pretty much probably not be recycled. I would like to see more brands, especially brands like Maybelline, L'Oreal, come out with products that are more... Um, eco-friendly and like actually address that actually address the um like the wastage side of it and the recyclability environmental side of their packaging then yeah i've switched across to something that everyone's saying it's glass i only have the older one in glass haven't seen the new packaging here yet yeah i'm not quite sure whether this is going to be because this does say no, I keep opening and closing this. It does say hashtag Amazon. So I don't know whether this might be an Amazon exclusive 
packaging or whether they're going to distribute this and change like all the packaging of the Maybelline Fit Me worldwide to this new packaging. Um, I have a ton of primers to go through as well. Yeah, I have a few primers. I have a lot of like mini sample size primers that I need to get through. Okay, we have a new product from Fresh and this is the Rose Petal Soft Lip Cream. Now, I remember, I think it was you, Carolyn, last week that pointed out that Fresh is not cruelty free. So for those of you that are cruelty free or transitioning to cruelty free, I would steer clear of Fresh as a brand in general. Um, this has rose flower oil and it also has a blend of emollient oils. So we've got apricot kernel, black currant seed, grape seed oils, and also vitamin E. So it's got a good mix of really nice nourishing oils and ingredients. It sounds really nice. We have a price tag of 24 US dollars for what looks to be quite a small pot. But I would imagine that maybe a little goes a long way with this, particularly because it looks quite thick. Um, I'm currently trying to use up the Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum Foundation. I paid forty dollars. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of money for a drugstore foundation. I paid forty dollars for it here in NZ, but don't love it, but don't hate it either. I wouldn't rebuy it though. Yeah, I can't remember. I think I have used that one from Bourjois, and I was the same. Like it was all right. Didn't love it. Didn't hate it. Didn't repurchase it. Forty dollars though. That's insane for a foundation. I think that's it on Trend Mood. I'm just going to jump on over to Indie Makeup and then we will be done. Okay. Look at that. Where did we get up to last week? I really wanted to talk about this because I am excited for this palette. This is going to be the Clarity Cosmetics Very Royal Palette. I'm so excited for this. If anything, if this packaging, this front design here is anything to go by what is inside the palette, I am excited. I'm so excited. So can't wait to see the reveal of what is inside this palette. This front packaging looks beautiful. Looks beautiful. It looks like um, looks like resin art actually. Beautiful. Um, we've already spoken about Nomad, and this is the Clarity Cosmetics Juicy Peach Palette. So we have the reveal of the shades. Oh, I love the names. Love how everything has peach in it or is peach related. Um. Not the biggest fan of the colors. I don't think I would wear these. This one's really nice. And this one. $41. It's available for pre order and it will ship on the 2nd of May. And I think that these might be so 3.5 grams. No, they must be small shadows. It looks better in this really well lit photo than the swatches do, I think. This, no, this one's really nice. Peaches and cream. Um, what else do we have? I've already spoken about the taco palette. I'll talk about these ones real quick. So these are the new Davina Cosmetics Cake Candy Cakes collection. This is launching on the 1st of May. It is a collection of six shades. You can get them individually for eight US dollars or 48 US dollars for the bundle of six. Let's see what they look like. Ooh, they're a bit duo chromey. Very pretty. Very pretty. Oh, did I mix over that? These are very pretty. Davina's in America though, and as I just said, I'm kind of not buying internationally at the moment. So we definitely hold off buying these until later down the track. 
Um, but a reasonable price. I think they're a really good price. I think Davina in general is a really reasonable price. Can't believe I've skipped over this. I didn't see the little Glamatrix cosmetics. I have seen this. Um, I saw the pan that she revealed and I saw the swatch. This is beautiful. This is the Lucid Highlighter from Laminatrix Cosmetics. You guys know Laminatrix Cosmetics is one of my favorite indie brands. Her shadows are stunning. And her, I think this is her first, this might be one of her first highlighters. Here we go. This is the one I'm talking about. This is the picture I saw. It looks beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It's got like a green reflect to it. Absolutely beautiful. This comes in a 36 millimeter pan. I would really like to see it in a small pan so it fits in my eyeshadow palette. <laughs> I have a huge like 90 pan eyeshadow palette, pretty much of only her eyeshadows <coughs> that I'm trying to fill. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous. Uh, but her eyeshadows are beautiful. This Easter collection that she brought out was absolutely stunning. That's the swatches of them. Absolutely stunning. I didn't order them myself, but they look absolutely stunning. I have pretty much most of her eyeshadows. I think there's a few because I haven't ordered from her in um, a while. There's a few that I haven't got. Oh, this is cool. I like how she's got the imprint. Uh, $18, I'm very, very tempted. Yeah, I think she's pretty reasonably priced as well. Like for the Australian makeup market, I think she's pretty reasonably priced. And she's she's lovely. Like <laughs> I've spoken to her on Instagram a few times. She's lovely. Um, and she's always very, like, she always keeps her customers up to date with what's going on with their orders. If she's over time, she always, like, puts extra little thank you gifts in the parcels. I think she's really good. Uh, this is a new eyeshadow bundle from MBA Cosmetics. We have some pastel eyeshadow colors in here with this cool, like, scale print on it. I like that. Um, no prices, no swatches just yet. So we'll have to check back in on that one. At some point in the future when we see more from them i'm going to skip over this as well because this doesn't really tell us all that much other than that it's going to be a bell palette or bella palette can't see any swatches or anything this is a new chameleon glitter in the shade disco from lorena makeup cos looks pretty this looks like a holographic glitter though Okay, we have some new products coming out from Sugary Cosmetics. We have the Sugary Scoops Ice Cream Collection. Seems like every brand and their mum are releasing pastels at the, at the moment. Yeah, I agree, but I think it's kind of one, because of the season, and two, because of the bandwagon. <laughs> because we're coming into, well, up, up north in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, they're going into spring and pastels, I guess you could traditionally associate with spring and it's like an Easter kind of Easter palette. So I think that's why a lot of them are coming out with pastels and the bandwagon because everyone else is bringing out pastels. They're going to bring out pastels. So we have a, <laughs> we have a highlighter palette, which looks like a little bit like Neapolitan ice cream. Then we have a eyeshadow palette which the colors actually don't look too bad. And then we have a blush palette, which I like. <laughs> then we have some lashes and some lipsticks, liquid lipsticks. So two reds, uh, we have a set of lashes. We have Neapolitan ice cream highlighters, the banana split eyeshadow palette and the blush palette. These all look like the, the lid, like the, the top completely comes off, like it's not attached at all. Yeah, I don't really, not really keen on these just because of the weird shape. 
I like the colours. The colours look nice, but the weird shape. It's just going to be too hard for me to store. Way too hard. Okay. What is this? This looks like a heart-shaped... Myocardium sponge. So it's now available for $10 and they're donating 50% of the proceeds to go to CDC COVID-19 Foundation. It's a makeup sponge in the shape of a heart. Arm Cosmetics RX. I've never heard of... <laughs> I've never heard of... Arm um, Cosmetics. I don't know if you guys can see this comment here. <laughs> it's a Ouija sponge. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yep. It's a weird shape. Okay. Um... This is the last thing that we're going to talk about. This is the new Glam Light Glam Donut eyeshadow palette, I'm assuming. Nope, I don't know. It could be anything. This is just a sneak peek. Okay. But it's in the shape of a donut. We've seen a couple of brands come out with donut palettes. I think was it Makeup Revolution brought out donut palettes last year in those little tiny compacts. I think that was them. But yeah, we shall see. We shall see. I probably won't buy it because it's a weird shape. <laughs> That's one of the main reasons why I haven't bought anything from Glamlight. But I do think Glamlight as a whole, I think it's a pretty good brand. I think the whole ethos behind the brand is pretty cool. Um, I heard somewhere, I can't remember where I heard it, but the founder basically has started the the food themed palettes to help people that have bad associations with food to help them get like a positive association with food items. So anyone that has had, ever had any like, um, what's the word, any food related disorders or anything like that to help them have that positive connotation with food again, which I think it's a really cool, it's a really cool um, idea. Let me just make sure. While we're here, I'm going to do a shameless plug. If you're not already following me, following me on Instagram, this is my Instagram page. I haven't posted for a while. I post more on stories than I do my feed. But if you want to see any, like, up-close photos or swatch photos or anything like that, then that's where I post them. Um, yeah. The makeup underscore enthusiast, that's me. Okay, let me stop sharing my screen and you can get my face. So that's all the beauty news for this week. A fair bit this week. I thought that we were going to be through it quick smart, but that was not the case. Um, yeah, what are you guys doing for the rest of the day? We Now is the time for us to do our, our weekly chit chat, our weekly catch up our weekly check-in um, to see how everyone is going. Um, <laughs> last week I wasn't sounding very positive, but this week was a lot better. <laughs> this week I was like working in a different section at work and I had Thursday, Friday off and I was really productive on Thursday, Friday and even yesterday. So it's been a really good week. It's been a really good week for me mentally <laughs> because I was able to like check out and um, enjoy myself and actually have time for me. So I caught up, caught up on some assignments. I did some editing. I did some craft. It was a really good, um, it was a really good week for me. Um, Carolyn is cooking lunch for her mother-in-law at the moment. <laughs> You're so nice. I don't remember the, my, my in-laws, like they all live really close. But because of we're trying to like distance ourselves from each other, we haven't really seen each other in person for a while. You're still in your PJs. If I didn't go out, I went out and um, got drive through coffee because I was hanging for a good coffee. I would still be in my PJs as well. But I've got like a PJ jumper on, which kind of 
close enough. <laughs> it's a good time to stay in your PJs, definitely. Yeah, I can't wait till I can like start seeing my family again. <laughs> my parents selfishly moved to towns, so I can't see them all the time now. But my in-laws still, they all live recently close to us. We just haven't been seeing each other because um, like my sister-in-law's pregnant, my mum-in-law works in the hospital. So we're all trying to like keep each other safe and like stay away from each other. Yeah, I think for the rest of the day, I need to film a video for you guys. I'm very behind. Um, I need to edit some videos. I need to. I have videos from like last year, videos that I filmed in, filmed in December that I just haven't bothered to edit yet. And then I'm gonna go finish off my craft that I started yesterday. One of them I ruined last night because I dropped on the ground and it landed face down. So I have to fix it. I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but I'll figure something out. Yeah, I think that's probably it, unless there's anything you guys want to know or I think everyone is over the social distancing. It's getting boring. Yeah, I think everyone's starting to get a little bit of cabin fever. Um, I have been doing things to like occupy myself. I've like started doing, um, I've started doing like, new craft things that I have wanted to try for a while. So I'm doing things that are like keeping me occupied, but not seeing people is difficult. Not like just being able to go out for lunch is difficult. Um, like mentally it's difficult. I think we all know like there's a good reason why we're doing this, but it doesn't make it any less difficult on like our mental health. Um, my mother-in-law is elderly, but we live on the same property. Lunch on the front porch in the fresh air at a social distance. That'll be so nice. That'll be so nice. Okay. I think, <laughs> I think I'm definitely going to go now. I do this every week. I never know how to sign off on these live streams because I feel like I don't know, just feel weird signing off. Um, if you are here and you haven't already, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up um, and share it with your friends. If you have friends that you think would enjoy gossiping and talking about makeup, then let them know we are here every um, Sunday at 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, but I think you're all subscribed. Um, not many people that aren't subscribers <laughs> show up to the live streams but anyway uh yeah like i said give it a big thumbs up have an amazing week have an amazing rest of your weekend stay safe look after yourselves as always if you want someone to talk to you can dm me on instagram you can send me an email my email address is always down below in my description boxes so if you need someone to talk to or read at um <laughs> you can email me or dm me have an amazing weekend uh, have an amazing week. I'll see you next week, Sunday, Australian Eastern Standard Time at 9 a.m. And, um, yeah, look after yourselves. Stay safe. Stay home. Wash your hands. And I'll see you next week. Goodbye, everyone.